the Academy is live. The Academy is live. It's alive. Which means we need some introduction music. Thank you very much. Right. The Academy is going to be live for a period of time. Uh, going live for 60 minutes. There we do. There we go. That will do. <laughs> there we do. Going live for 60 minutes. Super sweet. Um, requires music. Maestro. Let's get us started. Okay. The Jimmy Hoffa Band will kick us in. Facebook review. Okay, thank you very much. Fading down the Jimmy Hoffer band, Austrian rock and roll music. Super sweet. Thank you very much, guys. Pause it there. There we go. Okay, I have a number of articles that I've picked up from the internet, um, and a lot of things. The wind is opening the door behind me. Right. Um, a lot of things that uh, I haven't covered that I want to cover and a lot of things I want to review at the same time. So I thought I'd start by scrolling through Facebook and finding out what's been happening there recently. I thought I'd share some of the stories, share some of the information, share some of the articles, share some of the uh, the goings on. Um, wherever you are, I hope you're having a great afternoon. It's a sunny day in Banska Bistritza. My name is G. I am the founder and director of the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching. We are a small private online based academy that uh, runs English language courses and does personal coaching with clients who are interested in proving, improving, proving, proving and improving the quality of their life. If you want to know more about how the sessions work, you can find lots of information on our homepage, which is somewhere behind me, uh, www.nsa-slovakia.com. So there's lots of information there, and uh, we have videos and all oh, lots of other stuff. Anyway, you're not here for that, are you? You're here for the news. So kicking off, because uh, the clock is always ticking, so we have to be kicking. And um, this morning's stream, oh no, yesterday's stream. Yesterday's stream is at 147 views. I'm quite happy with that. That's nice. Moving on. Um, a uh, bit of information about uh, Donald Trump's tax returns. Um, this is what I wrote yesterday. Why so quiet? Donald Trump paid over $38 million in federal taxes in 2005. In other words, he contributed almost 3,000 times as much money to the U.S. government as the average U.S. citizen that year alone. That's like a hundred times as much as the average taxpayer pays in a whole lifetime. Right, and you can't see that all, can you? There you go, there's the text. you find it on my Facebook page. The point is that everyone was complaining that he didn't pay taxes, but he did, but he did. Anyway, that's just one year. The question is, what about the other years? I know the question is, what about the other years? But what about that year, right? Um, don't change the subject. You notice how people always want to divert the conversation? They always want to divert the conversation onto what they like and to what they want. And 
onto what they know. Hey, check this out. Um, our backwards culture. This is a tweet. Um, hey, Donald Trump, shut your punk ass up talking shit about my uncle before we pimp your wife and make it work for us. Yes, yes. People are writing all over Twitter that they want to make Donald Trump's wife uh, pimp for them. Yes, very clever, guys. Very clever. These people should be locked away. That's it. End of story. Um, here's a picture. Can you see? Oh, I'm scrolling down too much, haven't I? There we go. That's my coffee from this morning where I was in Zvolen uh, with the guys from Total Music. They rock. And I was picking up some stuff. Covered that in the morning session. Oh, that was my little competition online. Can you guess? Can you guess where I am? Um, yes, it's written on the cup. Yes, but where is that place? Special prize goes to Yanka. Thank you for guessing correctly. This is a picture of the ink in my printer. A little story about this. Um, the story is that, uh, well, I kind of, I kind of summarized it on my Facebook. I summarized it on my Facebook. Where did I, did I write? Does this comment go above it? The comment goes above it. Yes. The SHIT I have to deal with. Cost of my printer? 150 euro. Cost of a new ink set? Boo. It's moving all by itself. 130 euro. Cost of a basic new printer with ink is 50 euro. How could this even be possible? How is this even possible? How is it possible that the, I don't even, I can't even explain it. I, how is it even possible? Right. Um, well, they make the money on the ink, don't they? I mean, it's a loss leader. They're selling the printers, which are just giant pieces of plastic, essentially, for uh, with a couple of rollers inside and a few microchips. Um, they're selling the printers for a loss, and they're selling the ink for a gain. And... Um, and I have tried various systems. At 130 euro for the four ink cartridges is just ridiculous. Oh, but you can go online and you can find the same things much cheaper made by other companies. Yes, but the Hewlett Packard printers are designed only to read special information and codes that are contained in the Hewlett Packard ink. So you can't really use any of those independent ink cartridges. That it's a secure closed circuit system, basically. So they've thought they've thought of everything, basically. They've thought of everything. And now I'm thinking I'm just not gonna have a printer because this is absolutely pointless. Hewlett Packard, what were you thinking? Yeah, and then I saw this. I saw this other printer that was the, the printer that was 50 euros, and I was looking at that printer, and that printer said, uh, "What did it say? Super printer prints 150 pages with each cartridge. Like as if 150 pages is a lot. I can print 150 pages in a day. What am I going to do? Change the cartridge every day? This is ridiculous. So." Um, if anyone has any suggestions about how to solve printer problems, then that would be super cool. Um, what's the most economic? What's the most effective? What do you think? Let me know. You can always write in the chat. Moving on. As we scroll through Facebook. Ah, there we go. Another fantastic report by Paul Joseph Watson. Um, see if we can... Uh, See if we can bring this up a little bit. How long is it? It's only about three minutes. Okay, right. How can we bring this onto the screen? Let's see if I can do a little bit of uh, resizing. Is that going to work? That might work. Okay. Let's get rid of my graphics. Okay, I can do that. There we go. Power of technology. Who is Rachel Maddow? Does anybody really care? Is the media obsessed with the media? Yes, it is. Right. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Clear my throat. Excuse me. What does Paul Joseph Watson has to have to say about Rachel Maddow? Shall we discover together? Let's see if it plays.
leftists began wetting their pants with excitement when Rachel Maddow let rip this bombshell revelation. Trump's tax returns would be exposed in what promised to be a devastating new scandal that could bring down the president. MSNBC began the countdown as America collectively held its breath. And then the bomb was dropped. Donald Trump is a hard-working, successful businessman who pays the amount of tax he's legally required to pay. <laughs> so Maddow's big revelation was that Trump has paid more tax, 25%, than Barack Obama, 19%, Bernie Sanders, 13%, and MSNBC's parent company, Comcast. 24%. And while Maddow was rambling for 20 minutes, the details of this 1040 form, which wasn't even a tax return, had already leaked online. The Trump White House itself had already scooped Maddow. We haven't seen a news media fail this epic since Geraldo Rivera opened Al Capone's empty vault. Even the virulently anti-Trump mainstream media was forced to concede it was a total embarrassment. Even CNBC, which is owned by the same parent company as MSNBC, said that this handed a victory to Donald Trump. This return in isolation is nothing burger. Donald Trump paid $38 million to America's government? That's a good night for Donald Trump. I'm sorry. When even far leftists like Sally Cohn and Van Jones are forced to admit that it's a nothing burger, chances are it's a nothing burger. This massive scandal proved so beneficial to Trump that some people are even speculating Trump leaked the document himself. Oh yeah, and the New York Times suggested before the election that Trump may have avoided, quote, paying any federal income taxes for... Yeah, that's all very nice, but does anyone remember? Does anyone remember what the media said? Do you even remember what you said? Do you remember what you said yesterday? What was in the paper yesterday? I mean, in my experience, newspapers can print one thing one week and then print completely the opposite thing the next week and nobody will know the difference. If basically because nobody reads newspapers anymore, I think. Um... Very few people. People get their information online from sources that reflect their own opinions. Um, anyway, it's it's interesting to keep tabs, keep tabs, follow follow the flow of things. Let's get a bit more from uh, Paul Joseph Watson. Up to 18 years. Turns out that's fake news. Can the left provide us with any more fail? They seem to have an endless supply. The grab her by the pussy tape failed. Jill Stein's recount failed. Rioting failed. The fake news narrative failed. Autistic screeching failed. The Pissgate BuzzFeed dossier failed. And now this. So much fail. Trump told us that we'd get tired of winning. Nope, hasn't happened yet. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. It's real. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. I knew I'd find the audio somewhere. Thank you. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Paul Joseph Wilson's report? Is he on? Is he spot on? Um, he's definitely pro-Trump. Um, and why not? Because everyone else seems to be against him. Why not? Um, once again, his links were blocked on Facebook two days ago. All of them. Interesting. Interesting. Right. On to Milo. Milo Yiannopoulos. Who is he? Who is he? Is he an important person? What is he doing? Why is he on Facebook? Why is this video here? Well, Milo, in my opinion, is a leading intellectual. And he's been under attack constantly from the mainstream media because uh, his political perspective goes against the grain. It's not how people should be. People shouldn't think like that. People shouldn't be like that. People shouldn't act like that. And he is able to articulate himself very clearly. Now, whereas the Paul Joseph Watson report didn't have any text to go with it, you, here you will get the uh, the text of everything that he says, uh, almost everything that he says, so you can follow it as well. So that's from my uh, 
Slovaks out there so that you don't get you don't get lost because I know a lot of people when they're online they talk quickly and people don't quite get everything or understand everything that is said so um, I want to make things clear for you if something is not clear let me know and I'll try to clear it up um, so we're going to follow what uh, what Milo has to say about uh, gender differences and uh, we covered a little bit of that there was a tiny little bit of that in the session this morning and what I want you to focus on is the fact that the question is trying to catch out the question is a loaded question it's not a real question it's not an open question the person asking the question doesn't care about the answer the person is just asking the question so that they can basically spit on the speaker um, and that happens some conversations are not real conversations they're just oh well got a phrase for that but it's not very nice um, anyway I'll, le I'll leave it up to, to Milo if you go through this and you, you you follow what he's saying you follow the logic he takes you step by step through the argument it's sweet it's sweet ready to rock Is Facebook doing his thing again? I wonder if this just happens with Milo videos, or if this happens with with uh, the other videos as well. What do you think? What should I do? It's very odd that it's happening with this video. I'm sure if I was playing Disney or Mickey Mouse, that um, it wouldn't have any problem playing those. Should we go for a refresh? I don't know where that's going to take us, though. Okay. We'll go and see if it's a refreshing problem, or we'll see if... There we go. That's my Facebook page. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. If you link to me, you'll get notifications of the live posts when they go live. You'll also be able to ask me questions. The page has shrunk. Oh, no, that's me now. Ooh. Moving on, moving down, moving down. 80 views from this morning. Oh, we're, go we're going backwards through things. We'll get to Milo. We'll get to Milo after we um, after we have uh, seen what uh, one of my students was having for breakfast. You look at that? I think they actually have to taste test all these chocolates. Can you? <sighs> It comes from a company, Lyra, Lyra Chocolate. Uh, it's at the bottom there. Lyra Chocolate is a Slovak chocolate company, which has produced some of the finest chocolates in Europe and won many awards. And still, many people are not aware that this company exists. Slovaks, you don't know how lucky you are. You've got this on your doorstep. I tried some of the chocolate, and it is to die for. Lyra Chocolate is to die for. Well. Not completely, of course. Right. Let's see if we can pick it up now. Okay. Right. Um, my name is Tanay. I'm the current president of our NAACP chapter. Great. And so I just have a few questions. During your entire presentation, I noticed that you failed to mention that feminism is the belief that men and women are equal. So do you not think this? And then also, I noticed when you were talking about America's values and about how great America is, yep. you failed to mention that our nation was built on the power of white men without the acknowledgement of black people, the Indians, women at least. So do you not think that men and women are equal? Do you not acknowledge the problems that we have here in America that does, in fact, not make America great? All right. Um, no, no, no. Let's be respectful. I mean, let's be not res triggered. I understand no, 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 how to no, no, no. handle myself, a, unlike some Trump guys, supporters. Guys, guys, guys. It was, so. a, it was a perfectly reasonable, respectful question. Let's be respectful. Thank you. Um, on the first half of your question, women don't agree with you. Uh, fewer than one in five women in America describes themselves as a feminist, even mm. though over 85% of them believe in inequality between the sexes. Why? Because they know that feminism has become something different now. They know that the feminism you're talking about, it's very convenient, isn't it, to sort of treat men like shit. And then when people say, I'm not a feminist, say, oh, but feminism's out of quality. That's not what feminism has become. 
It's not what feminism is anymore. Feminism is a mean, vindictive, spiteful, nasty, man-hating philosophy. So that why has very would you little, Well, let me finish, because i let you finish, okay? okay. Um, that has very little to do with the equality of the sexes and a lot to do with man-hating. And the way that you know that is women are abandoning it in their millions. Women don't want feminism anymore. They have rejected your version completely. They don't agree with you. In the UK, the numbers are even worse. Just 7% of women in the UK describe themselves as feminist, despite the fact that 92% of women, in, uh, of women in, in the UK believe in equality of the sexes. It's very clear what's happening. They don't believe that those two things mean the same, because if they did, they'd give the pollsters the same answer to, the, to the, both those questions. Women know that feminists say one thing and do another. Women know that the primary purpose of feminism these days isn't to promote equality. It is to beat down on men. So you've lost, you know, you have a big PR problem on your hands. And when you come up and say, you know, well, how dare you not mention that it's actually just about quality of the sexes. Don't you believe in equality of the sexes? I very clearly said in my speech for, uh, multiple times that I do and that I love women, that I care about them. But, um, you know, this sleight of hand that feminists play when they're perfectly happy to treat men like shit and, and, and spread these conspiracy theories about the patriarchy, these lies about the wage gap, lies about campus rape culture, and then turn around and play the victim and play innocent and say, feminism is just about equality. Give me a break. Give me a break. So, <laughs> as to your, as to your s second part of your question, um, I, I get some I get some shit from conservatives for this answer, by the way. But I agree with you. I agree with you that there are structural historical problems in this country. Um, I agree with you that black community has been treated like hell by both Democrats and Republicans. I just don't think Black Lives Matter is the answer. Um, I don't think that throwing your toys out the pram and burning your own cities is the answer. I think better schools would help. And I think if black people really wanted to improve their lot and improve their situation, they would start voting for Republicans. Because when they do, and when people police properly, black lives are saved. Bill Clinton, who signed the crime bill in, which took thousands of black dads out of families and threw them in jail, the terrible, pointless, awful war on, war on drugs, right? Um, replacing you know, the, the, the black dad with the state, which is what Democrats have systematically tried to do to you guys for generations. And Black Lives Matter's response isn't to say, we're going to try voting for the other guys because 40, 40 years of this hasn't worked. What we want is better schools so that a poor black child who is smart could go to Harvard. They don't do that. They cause a fuss, they block a road, and they burn their own towns down. So yeah, I agree with you that there's a problem but I, I think we probably have very, very different prescriptions for that. Sweet. Straight to the point. Straight to the point. He cuts to the truth like a knife, like a hot knife through butter. He really does. Um, the question was a loaded question. The... It was obviously prepared in advance. It was obviously, if he doesn't talk about this, then I'm going to nail him with the information. And so let's have a quick review of uh, what he said there. So uh, I'm writing the key points in the chat. So if you want to follow them with me, that's great. So I wrote first that she would not wait for a full answer. Um, and that she was putting words in his mouth, it's true. He said that feminism is often not about equality. Sadly, there is a lot of hate. Yeah, and it's not being driven in a positive direction when you're being driven by anger and driven by hate, because that anger and hate is coming from inside of you. Only 7% of women in the UK call themselves a feminist. Why would anyone want to be a feminist? It's like being a maleist. I mean, it just... What's, what's, yes, every thinking person knows that everyone should have a relatively equal opportunity based on the intelligence that they can communicate to other people. Of course, there was a problem in the 80s in Britain with equal opportunities. There was a massive problem because equal opportunities meant that you had to have the same number of women as men applying for a job. 
which was crazy because surely you want the best person for the job and that just meant interviewing people for the job who would definitely not be good enough which was a complete waste of time for everybody it's the same with if you if you're prescribing that you want a certain number of immigrants applying for a job it's uh, you're going to lose out on people who are already well qualified to to take the position you're going to end up wasting a lot of your time you want the best person for the job fat thin tall short black white male female doesn't matter that's it it just takes the best people that you can find there you go everything else is a waste of time clever line you have a PR problem it's all public relations it's all political it's all political every movement is political if you're a student and you're part of a student group don't think your movement isn't political yes but I'm not political it doesn't matter where does it come from most people don't know where anything comes from they don't know where their movement comes from they don't know where their ideas come from they don't know where their company they're working is coming from I mean there are organizations that I know of that were set up as government sponsored organizations that people think are absolutely independent I'm not going to mention them here but um, the people don't know I, I'll never forget having a conversation with a group of people who worked for a big publishing house and saying well who do you work for and who's above that and who's above that they had no idea they had no idea and if you don't know who you're working for how do you know you're not working for the devil who are you working for? Do you know? Right. I search the Clinton crime crime bill. Um, you know the largest amount of male black incarcerations in history, I believe, happened during the Clinton era when they uh, criminalized small small crimes and other crimes related to drugs. First, they would ship in all the drugs and force everyone to or socially pressure everyone into taking the drugs and then they take everyone and throw them in jail what a perfect system right um, better schools we all know we need better schools uh, but uh, first of all we have to start at home we need better homes before we have better schools thank you Milo that was the Facebook review link to me on Facebook um, it's Graham William Henry you'll get the live posts Super cool. Thank you very much. Moving on. Where's my homepage? Hmm, it's not there. All right. Um, stories, stories, stories. Shall we jump into the views and the news? <laughs> I think we will. We will begin here. All right. So I don't know if you saw this in the news. This is part of the transhumanist agenda. Um, I'll bring my any questions bar back there we go if you have any questions please write them in the chat please feel free to uh, express your opinion I tried to say something intelligent try to give an intelligent view I mean at least get the spelling right and try to type more than two words which uh, seems to be the most that people can um, contribute it's interesting I was looking at some of the articles remember when news articles used to be like these really really long columns of of, of educated uh, content and uh, verbal dexterity well look what we've got now I mean I have almost every article is, is is dumbed down to the point of just one line big space one line big space one line big space what is that I mean is that is that journalism seems like something else to me I, I don't I don't even know what to call it anyway moving on uh, we all know that technology is a large part of our lives it's uh, it has come to be resting between us and what I mean when I say that the technology is resting between us is that we can't communicate without it there was a period of time when the only hmm, why is this out of focus hmm, just change that there was a period of time when 
the only kind of contact that could exist was that kind of contact where people were talking face to face in the same place. Now, with telephones, with uh, video chats, with uh, technology, that's all changed. Uh, with emails as well, for example. So the technology is resting in between people. And uh, every year, there's more and more technology in between human communication. Will it be at the end of the day that we won't be able to communicate without the technology? It's an open question. What do you think? Will we be able to communicate without the technology? Anyway, we are being slowly pushed, nudged. We're being slowly nudged down the road of uh, getting more and more technology into our into our homes, into our into our personal lives. And uh, here we have a story from the Mirror in Britain. Meet the Robo Thespian. A Robo Thespian. Yeah. New word for the English language. Meet the Robo Thespian, the robot playing a leading role alongside real actors in British theatre. Hmm, British theatre. Lovely. Shall we play a little bit? Would you like that? Hmm? Are you talking to me? Yes. You're talking to me as if I'm Raymond. I don't know. You know everything. If you want, I can talk back like real Raymond. Wonderful, wonderful, just like Hollywood. <laughs> I think the theatre in my village is better than that, but um, uh, the village where I used to live, anyway. Um, <laughs> it was terrible, it was absolutely awful. Anyway, um, why would people go and see that? They must be desperate. Anyway, um, compare that with Shakespeare. I mean, <laughs> it's just a <laughs> uh, big weight from a heavy height, dropping onto a small thing, right? Theatres around the country are preparing to welcome a somewhat different cast member to their stages, a humanoid robot. So they have to call it humanoid. They have to call it human as a human robot, so that in, and that word comes first, so we think in our brain that it's human. It's all linguistical play. Spillikin, is that right? Spillikin. Spillikin features a robo thespian who talks, displays facial expressions, blinks, moves his hands, turns his head, and has even been described as affectionate. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't say who described it as affectionate. Maybe a... Okay. The play starring Judy Norman tells a story about a robot maker who builds a robot to keep his wife company after he dies. Oh, it's so sentimental. Cornwall-based Pipeline Theatre, which has worked with robotics company Engineered Arts for the project, is touring across England. Uh, the tragedy of it all. It's going to want to go and see that. It's just freaky. Yeah, and then they'll have more robots, right? Then they'll have more robots. And then people will be going to be entertained by robots. And you'll have the robots influencing the human emotional state. Ah, you, where is that going? Where is that going? The idea for the play came when the robot maker, who has been making robots for 10 years, approached the local theatre company and offered them the chance to use one of his incredible creations. Nothing to do with the government, of course. We've had pre we have pre-programmed every single thing the robot says and everything the robot does, all the moves. Yeah. Said writer and director John Welch. So the robot will always say the same thing and move in the same way depending upon what cue is being triggered at what particular time. Oh that's great acting then, isn't it? How can you call that acting? You can't call it acting at all. Oh look, lovely picture. Tra la la. Because I had to make an article out of this. It's about ten lines. It must have taken about twenty seconds to write this. The robot is connected to the theatre's control room, where a laptop transmits cues for its performance. 
there's a big pressure on the actor to always have the right lines, always stand in the right place so that the robot is looking at the right direction at that particular moment. Oh, big pressure, it's so difficult. On stage, Norman talks to the robot and even kisses it. In return, the robot replies, displays facial expressions, and moves its hands. It's all very Doctor Who, isn't it? Right. Oh, how does it finish? Working with a robot is something, of course, I have never done before, so it's a completely different experience, she said. Yeah, you're paid to do it, that's why you do it. When he looks at me, this is going to sound weird, but he is very affectionate and I like him, I really like him. I can see why you're doing local theatre. Right. Spillikin runs in London until March the 19th and continues its tour until April, after which point the robot will be decommissioned and crushed into little pieces. Perhaps. <sighs> They're playing with us. They're toying with us. We are their toys. Don't you think? If you have another opinion, write it in the chat. Write it in the chat. So, um, that's from uh, that's from the mirror. I'll copy and paste the link into the... Ooh! Didn't want that to happen. <laughs> copy and paste the link into the chat. Story or article is a better title. Article. <laughs> bad acting meets bad robot. There we go. There's my review. Um, tell me what you think. That's not the only transhumanist element. The, the robots are coming at us from all directions. Like you get those little robots that clean the floor in your house now. Um, soon there'll be ones that clean your windows as well. Um, in shops, in in hotels. Here we go. Um, thank you very much to uh, Pig Mine for mining out this video for us and uh, the video has the title leaving humans behind dinosaurs greet guests at robot hotel so they're they're, they're disguising the uh, robot as a dinosaur to make it all cute and user-friendly uh -huh. um, shall we go through the video i'll see if it plays Guests are greeted by dinosaurs at this hotel near the Tokyo Disney Resort. They are just one of nine different types of robots. They're not actually really dinosaurs, guys. <laughs> There's a robot bin! You're going to have to chase it if you want to throw anything out. They look after visitors. Oh my god, I, I, I very much doubt they do. I bet it's full of microphones that spy on people. They stick a little camera in there and the bin will be watching the husband and wife on their honeymoon, right? <laughs> Scary Mary. It's the second hotel in Japan to be run by robots. Although there are human staff to help maintain the 140 devices on site, yeah, they're all going to be technically trained, right? Um, to s they're going to be spying on people, aren't they? Each room has a special robot which is going to listen to everything you say, which recognizes guest movements and suggests ideas. It is time to go to sleep now. The room rates start at $122 a night for two people. Why would you want to stay there? To get away from that stuff, you go to hotels to get away from that. The company behind has 
So it aims and is planning to open a third robot hotel this year. Oh my god. Enough is enough. Thank you very much. I do not want that. Thank you, but no thank you. I really don't want to go to a hotel that is run by robots. I like the human element. It's nice when a person smiles. It's nice when you've got a question and you can explain your problem to somebody. Oh. Ah, 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 what do you think? Um, what do you think? Would you go there? I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't go there. Not if you paid me. Not if you paid me. Article slash video. Going into the chat now is that last video that we played. Uh, so you can. Uh, take, I should. I should. I should make a comment about it. Um, bin runs hotel there you go that's what I think about that uh, moving on moving on what else have we got to talk about uh, been through Facebook we've been through Facebook we talked to the, we, we saw the Paul Joseph Watson uh, uh, criticism of Rachel Maddow we saw the Milo blah blah I can't pronounce his second name we saw his uh, um, very eloquent defense of uh, true equality and um, we just had these two videos as well so that's pretty cool that's pretty cool so I've got a question I'm going to finish with a question because I'm going to leave you with a question and the question is the question is why well I was I was walking I parked my car and I was walking to the office little story for you. Park my car, I was walking to the office and to get to the office I got to walk through the big shopping center. Europa, you know, it looks like a giant church. In fact, it is a church. It's kind of a like mecca for shopping and buying things that you don't need. Although occasionally I find myself going there because it's the only place that to open. And you, there was an argument for the fact that it does improve the quality of uh, the local services by itself providing good quality and I know some of the management and they're wonderful people but there you go but I was going through the center and I, I suddenly realized that on my, on my right side there was all oh, there were there were hundreds hundreds lots there were lots of people in the shop and I was like wow they must have got a sale on or something special because it's like the middle of the day and most people are working and uh, the shop was and it was a it was a shop with shoes and bags. That's all it had in it. Shoes and bags. Shoes and bags. And it was full of women. In fact, all the shops were full of women. There, was ba there were basically no men in the shopping centre. Because well, I don't know what the men were doing. Maybe working, I suppose. I'm not sure. But... Um, uh, <laughs> a dinosaur picture on the... On the screen really disturbs me anyway um so I did, what is it it did and the thing is that all these women obviously they, they've got shoes because they're walking around in them and they, they got bags because they're carrying what is the attraction of shoes at least with at least when i go and buy a piece of technology that i can use that to improve the quality of my my business or my life I can use that to share something. I can use that to build something. Why do women need more shoes and more bags and more shiny things? What are the shiny things that they hang from? What, what? Somebody please explain that to me. There must be some deep psychological historical reason for it. You hope, right? There must be some reason for it. So if you've got a suggestion, please type it in the chat. And let me know because I'm confused by that. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. If there are any subjects you'd like me to cover in the future, I will be very happy to cover them for you. Remember, you can reach us at nsa-slovakia.com. You can contact us through Facebook, through Pinterest, through YouTube. If you want, you can go to our home site. That's what's hanging out above my head. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, and you get uh, direct links to. Oh, you can't see them because they're behind me, but you'll get direct links to YouTube, Facebook, and Pinterest right at the bottom. Also, a lot of intro videos uh, to, to describe the courses that we run. 
personal courses, language courses, and everything designed specifically for you. Every course a little bit different. So if there's a topic subject you'd like us to cover, if you'd like a free consultation, you know, we can do it through Skype. It's not a problem. You don't have to leave your home or your office. And um, we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. This was a online session from the Language of Academy Therapy and Life Coaching, wherever you are. Have a really great evening. Um, I have a client coming for a consultation in a few minutes, so I have to prepare some material for them. I'm going to go away and do that and um, catch up with you later. Um, but I'm not going to leave you silently and quietly, because I can't. I've got to play a little something to take us out. The Jimmy Hoffer Band. The Draconian Saint. Ready? There'll be another live session tomorrow. There, go out and change the world. Go out and do something different. Go out there, change the world. Do something different. Change the world. Change the world. Change the world.